Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Clutch Talk podcast slash YouTube slash we do it all. As always, I'm your host, John. Very happy to be here. My boy, T. Riz. How you doing, my dog? Yo, they call me T. Riz because, you know, I get all the ladies over here. You feel me? I, I know how to speak. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, I'm doing good. Just got out of work. Um, I'm glad that I got my boy uh, Beast moving here, man. His TikTok is his TikToks are going crazy right now, man. You know, I see a lot of questionable, uh, questionable things he does say, though. He stares at players a little bit too long when he knows it better. He knows it. But uh, anyways, y'all should know him. You know, introduce yourself, my dog. What's good, y'all? Be smooth, Bobby, whatever you want to call me from Celtics Corner on YouTube. Uh, be real, be smooth on TikTok. Making content. People hate the way I think. I don't know. I think it's the funniest thing in the world. So just riding with it on the uh, NBA TikTok side. Yes, sir, man. Riding with it. I, lo- I love to hear that. And it's all good, Bobby. You know, it's people people are going to hate no matter what. You know what I'm saying? A hundred percent. Even if even if you write, somebody going to hate it, man. So just speak your mind and keep doing you, Bobby. So we happy to have you. Uh, on the show uh, for the for the family out there we're gonna get into uh some great great segments we got some nba news segments um gonna get bobby's thoughts on the, the hawks firing nate mcmillan rest of the clippers uh we got a stat and then uh we're gonna wrap it up with bobby's uh thoughts for the all-star weekend but let's not waste no more time if you're watching uh, make sure you smash that subscribe button make sure you smash that like button leave a nice comment down below and make sure you go check out all of bobby's content i'm gonna link it in the description down below but all that's out the way. Let's go ahead and get into it, guys. So uh, first segment that we're going to get into here is the NBA news, uh, rumors and updates. And, um, you know, the NBA was kind of dry. It's all-star weekend. Not much to talk about besides Mac McClellan, you know, saving the dunk contest and the no demons in the all-star game. But then, boom, this week, the Hawks drop a bomb on Nate McMillan and the NBA community, and they let him go. They have Hawks fire uh, Coach Nate McMillan. And now I want to, you know, get your guys' thoughts on this. Um, how would this affect the Hawks, you know, positively, negatively? Uh, Bobby, you're, you're the guest. I want you to take the floor first, my brother. So I, I would say it's not shocking at all. So I actually live in Atlanta. Even though I'm a Celtics fan, I live in Atlanta. So I keep them up to date with all the Hawks news. It came to a point early in the season, if y'all remember the news about Trey Young might get traded. It was a whole thing. And it's a whole thing with Trey and coaches. He can't get along with them. Lloyd Pierce wasn't a very good coach to begin with. McMillan was a good coach. He went to the ECF two years ago. I just think it just didn't work out in the long run. I feel like that was a spark in a bottle since season and a postseason where long term he was not the perfect fit for this team I, I think long run they're going to get Quinn Snyder it looks like that's a great coach works in defense DeJounte Murray Clint Capella Big O they got some defensive players and to you know surround themselves around uh almost called him Isaiah Thomas Trey Young I would say my looking forward with McMillan he'll probably go and get an assistant job but it just it was because Trey didn't want him that's it no more no less Trey didn't want him they couldn't work out it's either Trey or coach the coach goes every time. It's simple as that. So, listen, the Atlanta Hawks, to me, man, on paper, their roster is very good, right? I mean, when you just you just acquired Sadiq Bey, um, John Collins is who John Collins is, but he still could produce, right? Clint Capella, Trey Young, you did a huge offseason move for uh, Murray, and, them, and then you still got a little solid bench over there. You got A.J. Griffin, you recently drafted, uh, Bogdan, but Donovan's like, their roster is pretty, pretty deep, right? And there's just no way this team should be currently 29 and 30, eighth in the Eastern Conference. Um, they are 40, they're four and six in their last 10 games. They're just mediocre, right? They're 15 and 12 at home and 14 and 18 away. They're currently on a two-game losing streak, right? I also want to notice that they're in a, they have the third toughest schedule to finish out the year. So there's going to be a lot of questions. Do they even make the playoffs? Are they going to be a top six seed? Or are they going to be a playing team? And I want to say this, right, John? I remember a few years ago, Trey Young said, Regular season's boring. I just want to get to the playoffs. Well, ever since he said that, they made it to the Eastern Conference that year, right? They got 4-1 by the Milwaukee Bucks. The year after, they played the Miami Heat in the first round. They lost 4-1. And now this year, they just lost their head coach to David Billings. They're 29-30. and 30. So, Trey Young, you should have kept your mouth quiet because ever since then, they have absolutely done nothing. They made that big offseason move, which I thought they were going to prove because Trey Young could now play off ball because they used to abuse him in the playoffs on the defense end. You bring in that defensive guard, and they're still struggling. So hopefully Quinn Snyder can turn this team around because they are way too talented. And if he could turn this team around, the Atlanta Hawks have a great chance to upset a lot of teams because that's how talented this team could be. Trey Young is that dude. Even though he's having a little down season, he's still balling. He's still averaging double-digit assists, still 20-plus points a game with all the star players around him. So that's how I personally feel about the Atlanta Hawks. If they could turn this around, watch out. Man, I, and I'm, I'm right there with you, T, right? When we talk about the, the Atlanta Hawks, right? On paper, 
they have a really good roster. So if so, so if Quinn Snyder can come in and and help this and, and help this team turn around, they can get back to where they were. But yeah. my only thing that I I, I want to add is that I feel like even if Quinn Snyder comes in and does all that he can, this team is not a championship team yet. This team is not ready to go go, go up to bat against the Milwaukee's, against the Boston's. Uh, not even I mean the Phoenix. I, don't, I know they haven't yet played a bet on court together, but when you put up that that team versus um, a Hawks team, I don't know if I'm feeling too good about the Hawks, man. So that, that's why I wanted to get your guys' opinion. So even if everything goes right with Quinn Snyder, are the Hawks even real championship contenders? I would say every team in the NBA is pretty much in a bubble. I would say seven out of the 30 teams in the league, we all know are the championship level teams. Everyone else is. They understand that. We all know the Utah Jazz and the New York Knicks aren't championship level teams, but they still the goal is to try to win. They will be in the best position to win. Hawks did that two years ago. No one thought they should beat the Sixers, and they beat them. It was 4-2, actually, and they lost to the Bucs on road game six, and they didn't have, didn't have Giannis in that game. I feel like as long as you can get yourself in a position to at least compete and hope what happens, knock on wood, does Tatum go down? He's injured. Does Giannis catch COVID? Does uh, Joel Embiid, you know, get sick again? There's a lot of instances where just one injury changes the, the entire run of the postseason. So as long as you keep yourself in the play-in and give yourself a chance, that's all the Hawks need to do. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree, man, right? When you hit that postseason, anything can happen. At the end of the day, it all matters about who's the healthiest at the end, right? Yeah. The Boston Celtics can go 82-0. and 0. The Bucs can go 82-1. and um, 81 and 1. But if Giannis goes out with the injury, look, at recently he just got injured right now, right? Yeah. It's it's minor. But look, anything can happen. Drew can get out. Chris Milton go out. So I yeah. think the roster is talented enough to make a deep run, believe it or not. And then with a good head coach that – Hopefully Trey Young can respect and hopefully Quinn Snyder can put Trey Young in his place. The Atlanta Hawks are in a good position, even though they're struggling right now. I think they can turn this around ASAP right can now. I, these, Yep. You can add it. Can I say something real quick? And again, I, I've had this take on YouTube for years. I was seeing Brad Stevens, Udoka, and then going to Missoula with the Celtics. I've always said some, and again, people don't like it. I've always believed coaching was overrated to begin with. I understand the Phil Jackson's and then you have the Pat Riley's I understand all that coaching to me is like, Cool in the locker room, post short, small instances in the game, out of timeouts, and maybe who you want the ball to go to. It's the player's game. If your player's going to have a bad game, I don't give a game who your coach is. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you're going to have players trying to play an impact, DeJounte Murray, Trey Young, if those aren't your best two players on the floor, I don't care if it's Quinn Snyder or Phil Jackson is prime coaching, they're still going to lose. So I feel like the whole thing about is it Lloyd Pierce, is it McMillan, is it Quinn Snyder, I don't give a damn if it's me. If you have good players on the floor – you're going to win or you're going to lose it. It's all about that. Man, I, I, I like that take, man. I do like that take because a lot of people sometimes tend to give coaches a little bit too much credit. Yes. And so yes. I, do, I really do like that take, man. Although I, there, there is a fine line, though, because I do like I, – I think there are great coaches out there like Ty Lue, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's, it is that, that fine line that we have to walk. But before, before we get off the Hawks then, so – I granted, you know, I agree with you guys. Health is, is, is huge, man. You know, come, come postseason, anything can happen, but let's look at the Eastern conference right now. And let's say everyone is healthy. Let's just say that they got, they got their squad championship. That's, that's, that's different, but top six, do you see the Atlanta Hawks finishing as a top six in the East? If everyone is fully healthy, not just them. Probably not. Probably not. You probably have Celtics, Bucks, Heat, Sixers. That's four. Cavs. Have Cavs in there. Where are the Knicks at? The Knicks are probably, what, the seventh seed at this point? The Knicks are the sixth seed right now. I think the Knicks probably get that last spot. They get the sixth seed. I would agree. T-Riz? So, I don't think they're top six, but I think they're top seven, right? So, I think the Nets fall out because they're fifth. Yeah. So you're going to have the Celtics, Bucks, no matter what, with Sixers and Cavaliers. Those are your four teams, right? Heat are going to be in the picture, and the Dicks are going to be in the picture, right? You take out the Nets, the Atlanta Hawks are literally the best team right after that. I'm not worried about the Wizards. I'm not worried about the Bulls. I think they're all – I'm just not worried about them. And then maybe you can worry about Toronto, I guess. I'm not really worried about them, too. So I think they're going to be at least 7-8, but not top six. And listen, Trey Young, if he can just be Trey Young and what he did to the New York Knicks a few years ago, if he can do that, Anything's possible. Yeah. <laughs> Anything is possible. I agree, man. If, yeah, if Trae Young can, can act like every night he's playing in the Madison Square Garden, uh, <laughs> they'll be good, man. They'll go 82-0 and, uh, and be a championship team. But 
all right, man. So then that was just some, uh, some, some news around the, the Hawks and the future. Uh, but let's, let's get to another big news around the, uh, around the league. And that is, you know, part of the buyout market. Uh, Russ did, um, get, uh, did, did leave the Lakers and then he was in jazz for a little bit. Then he got bought out. And now uh, Russ is in the Clippers uniform. So, uh, Bobby, I, I don't know if you know my boy T too much, but he loves Russell West. He's a, he's a big I've Russell heard. guy. I've yeah. heard. <laughs> he's a big Russ guy. So uh, I, I know his thoughts. And, and T, I, I, I still we know, wanted to get your updated thoughts on Russ. And I know his first game is today. But what I want to hear from you, Bobby, is what are your thoughts with, with that? Do you think Russ fits? Uh, is that going to work? Is there a championship in the horizon? What are you feeling about that? Does Russell Westbrook fit with the Clippers? I think the only team Russ fits on is probably a bad team like the Pistons or the Magic. I think it's like if vegans fit in KFC, that's probably what the analogy is. Russell Westbrook, honestly, again, and no, no, hey, no, Trent, my boy, <laughs> Russell Westbrook is not a championship level player, man. This is not 2011 when he was getting carried by Kevin Durant. This is now Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and even those guys aren't at their peak as they once were. You have guys like Norman Powell, you have guys, they traded for Bones Highland, then just to to sign Russell Westbrook, it doesn't make sense to me. What was the whole goal? That you bring in Eric Gordon, Who? Where? where is this guard situation now? Terrence Mann was playing well for this team as their combo point shooting guard, whatever they want to call that combo guard. He was playing well, so what happens at that point guard spot? Is Russ coming off the bench? I've heard news that Russ is going to start. So now if he starts, where the hell is Eric Gordon go? Where does Terrence Mann fit into the situation? Where does Bowen Holland that you just traded for, where does he fit in this whole mix? I don't mess with it again. Russ can't shoot. He can't spread the floor. So you have Kawhi, you have him, you have Avika Zubats or Mason Plumley. You're talking about Eric Gordon, PG, being your best shooters on the floor at any given time. I'm not messing with it. Well, so, you know, be smooth, Bobby. You brought up points, right? But these are good points, right? These, I mean, these are good problems, right? There's good problems and bad problems. <laughs> what? 100%. These are good problems, right? When you're talking about all the players that you named, they're yeah. all rotational pieces. They all can play on the court. Ty Lue already came out say, if Russ is going to play bad, we're going to talk to him. We're going to take him out. And honestly, right, Russ is a type of play- – um, what's it called? I want to say this, correct, right? Um, Russ went to the Los Angeles Clippers because, one, he stays in L.A., right? Yeah. He stays with his family. But, two, let's not forget, the whole Los Angeles Clippers team has recruited him over there. He was a buyout market. He was a free agent, right? At the end of the day, Steve Ballmer – Ty Lu had made the decision to bring in Russell Westbrook. How Russell Westbrook has been playing bad for the Lakers, okay, it's fair. But if you look at the Los Angeles Lakers team that was constructed, they had no shooting, they had no spacing. Your two best players weren't shooters. LeBron James is attacking the rim. Anthony Davis forgot how to shoot. And what Russell Westbrook is known for is attacking the rim and kicking out for his um, teammates. That's all he did throughout his whole career. That's how he won his MVP. That's how he did all that good stuff. I agree. Russell Westbrook does a lot of bonehead moves where he does a lot of bad decisions. He turns the ball over in the worst moments, but that's why he finally got elite head coach. To be fair with you, Russell Westbrook never had an elite coach ever in his career. You look back at Scott Brooks, wasn't elite. You look back at uh, Mike D'Antoni, wasn't elite. He's not even head coach in this league no more. He's an assistant coach, right? Whoa. Facts. Please the name elite head coach right now, right? Then you got Darvin Hand, who's a first, first year head coach, I don't want to I, – I, I put my criticism on Darvin Ham, right, but I'm going a, I'm to a put some slack. It's your first year. He doesn't know how to work pro, uh, rotations properly, right? So now you have a championship head coach who played with one of the greatest players of all time – I mean, not played, who um coached one of the greatest players of all time in LeBron James, correct? Right? So if anything, I think Ty Lue can make this uh, work, work, out, um, work out, if anything, right? But also, too, Clippers have a bunch of shooting around him, and that's what Russ is no, – like, needs – he needs shooting. He needs the ball in his hand. He needs to, I don't, I, I trust me. I think there's still a lot of question marks that that's still out there, right? There's a ton of question marks, right? If Russ is starting, how and Kawhi and PG going to work out together, right? And they always say, let Russ be Russ, right? And I know that's getting criticized right now. They're making fun of it, da, da, da. but at the end of the day, the Lakers never let Russ be Russ because the roster just wasn't constructed enough to Russ be Russ. The Los Angeles Clippers, on the other hand, have the roster to Russ be Russ. You're making these emotions. It's facts. The Lakers are one of the worst constructed teams. Now they're looking pretty good. You know why? Because you got LeBron around shooters. You got LeBron around um a, you a took better the problem out in Westbrook. Hundred percent. You did take the problem out, but at the end of the day, y'all traded for that contract, and at you knew what you was getting for, right? Because a lot of fans say Russell Westbrook was trash before he joined Lakers, which is false because he still made 
all first team. You're trash, but you still made all first, all second team. I mean, I, I, I it is what it is, right? So I still think there's a lot of questions, but I think it's going to be a better fit. Um, I think Russ Zubats and Mason Plumley, they're going to make them look excellent because Russ makes any average big, right? Look like he's a top tier big. Look at Thomas Bryant. Look at Gabriel. Look at Clint Capella. Look at Stephen Adams. He already made them good enough, right? Now you got these wing shooters and Norman Powell. You at you you talk about why they add Bones Highland because Bones Highland is not a true playmaker. He's more of a scoring guard, right? And then Eric Gordon, on the other hand, he could play make, but he's not he's not going to do it as well as Russ is going to do. You forget Russ can help on the board count and also facilitate. That's what he's known for, right? Even with his worst season ever, he could st- he's still almost averaging close to a triple-double coming off the bench, seven rebounds and seven assists, right? So there's a lot of question moves, but I still feel like it's going to be a better fit and is his best fit for each team that he has been on besides OKC and, and maybe Houston. And I, I hear you. I, I hear you on that. But my concern, and, and I mean, Trey, you know this, my, my biggest concern is what's Russell Westbrook going to do when he What's his role going to be on this team when he doesn't have the ball? Because I agree, when Russell Westbrook has the ball, he makes some bonehead moves, has a lot of dumb, a lot of dumb turnovers. But there's times where he can really set players up. And I mean, as a Lakers fan myself, I know how much he made Thomas Bryant shine. I totally agree with you. He made he made a lot of a lot of bigs that are really mediocre. All they got to do is set a screen and roll, and Russ will hit you. Russ will set you up. But the thing is, what are you going to do in this situation? Are you going to take the ball away from Paul George? You know, take a ball away from Kawhi Leonard and you, two players, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, Kawhi Leonard less than Paul George, but both of those players really need the ball in their hands. They really need the ball in their hands to be the best version of themselves. So what are you going to do? You're going to say, oh, no, Kawhi. Oh, no, PG. Like, don't be the best version of yourself because we need Russ to be the best version of himself. Because this man is like 35, about to be 36, uh, 34, about to be 35 years old. He just like how Bobby said, he's not the 2011 version of himself. He's lost a lot of speed. And, and, this, and this is stuff that's been, that, that's been scientifically proven, like his, his speed down the court. And, I mean, it's, that's, that's okay. He's getting older. But I'm saying he's not that same player anymore. And what he used to do is he used to slash to the hoop, get to the hoop, and have the ball in his hands 98% of the time. You cannot do this on his Clippers squad because Paul George needs the ball 98% of the time. Can, can I Kawhi answer that Leonard. question? Go ahead. I want to answer that question. And Bob, you can talk, right? So, listen. The, the big question was, what is Russ going to do without the um, without the ball, right? Ty Lee, Ar- Ty Lu already made it known without him, in the, without him having the ball in his hand, he wants him to shoot the thing. I don't, I didn't say that's the greatest decision. That's what Ty Lu said. That's what Ty Lu said, right? <laughs> but that's right? not going to work though. That's not going to work. But but see the thing is, right? See the th- um thing is, right? I'm gonna go off what the coaching see. I don't care what anybody else see. These are some Hall of Fame, no, I'm not going to say Hall of Fame coach, but these are coaches that know basketball, right? We're just watching the game. They know what it is. Personally, we could see on the court, Russ is not the greatest shooter, right? But the thing is, this is where coaching kicks in. I don't think Ty Lue is going to let that happen. I don't think he's physically going to let that happen because he won't, He literally said he's going to have the best, about five best players out there every single night. But if Russ ain't part of it, it is what it is, right? He's not on that $47 million no more, right? So there's no pressure on that. At what LA, he was on $47 million. That's every that's everybody kept bringing up $47 million. We can't do this. No, he's not on that no more, right? Also, with Russ on Lakers, he had he there was so much pressure on him because he had to be that third guy. And typically the two stars were missing so much time, right? LeBron James was missing so much time. AD was missing so time, so much time. So with Russ, he, facts, LeBron and AD. No, I, I hear you, but I'm saying Kawhi misses a lot of time too. The Clippers miss a lot of time too. They do, right? But they they do, right? But they've been healthy, and that's the reason why they're back in fourth seed because they've been healthy. That's the thing, right? So one thing, um, for, so for the Clippers, see, you you, you messed up my whole train. I didn't say nothing. Right? I no, you messed up my whole. Tra- <laughs> you messed up my I whole. Just had a funny of- face. I just said, I don't know, boy. I don't know. But listen, but, but but what I'm trying to say, it right. There's still a lot of question marks. I love the fit. I love the co- like. This is going to be as one of his greatest coaches. We're going to see tonight. The Clippers have one of the toughest schedules remaining. So if they can win and win these games with Russell Westbrook on the court. Then it's cool. Oh, this is my point, right? <laughs> the Clippers are not relying on Russ. The Lakers were relying on Russ, right? The Clippers are relying on PG, Kawhi Leonard, and Norman Powell. That's their big three, right? So if Russ starts playing bad, put him to the bench. They have other players that can replace him. Bones Highland, Eric Gordon. They got a Robert, Robert Covington. They got a Terrence Mann. They still got so many pieces. That's, that team is so deep. They can go 15 deep if they really, really want to. Let's be honest with you. They could. And I can name every single player that we're we talking about. Mm, I don't know, bro. I see, I see 10 right now that are 
serviceable. Russell Westbrook, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Marcus Morris, Zubak, who's out right now, Terrence Mann, Eric Gordon, Norman Powell, Nicholas Batum, Mason Pumley. After that, it's just Bones Highland and then names start repeat. So I don't know, but but, but my boy Bobby, talk to, talk to us about, you know, I know you, you heard a lot from, 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 from T. Riz, from me. Talk to us about, you know, kind of your like final thoughts on Russell Westbrook and, uh, and some of Riz's thoughts, some of my boy T. Riz's I mean, thoughts. It's a lot of different emotions in my head right now. So first off, we talked about Trey Young with coaching. It doesn't really matter much. And then he just went and complained about Russ not having Hall of Fame coaches. I, there's Who no way brought I that up? You. I never this, agree with that point. This, I never man, agree with that point, though. I never this, agree with that point, though. That was man, you and John. Russell okay. Westbrook has been 1 or 1A one or 1B, sorry, on almost every team he's ever been on till the Lakers. And there's no way we're talking blaming him these coaches that he's been with Mike D'Antoni when he literally got gifted the ball. Hey, Russ, I want you to shoot. And it did not work out for him. He then said, well, hey, the Clippers, you know, if we don't need them, we don't need them. We aren't going to worry about them. If he's not playing well, bench them. Isn't that exactly what the Lakers did and Russ was pouting on the bench the entire time? It Is was that $47 why million. Was dollars, $47 million. That's the difference. Russ is it, no longer on that contract no more. That's the huge difference When right they're there. on that floor, I doubt they're talking about dollar bills. They're talking about winning a basketball game in that moment. Russ was not the best five to play in the fourth quarter. They picked Austin Reeves' ass to go in the game and not Russell Westbrook in the fourth quarter. Russ is sitting next to Darvin Ham. Why? Because he can't shoot. He can't pass. He can't make good decisions. The best thing he can do is run the floor and dunk every once in a while. Austin, this is bad. This is, I ain't going to hold you. I mark my words now. Terrence Mann starts at point guard more than Russell Westbrook to end this season. I promise you that. I will so not my, be shocked. So my thing is, right? I don't care about none of that. At the end of the day, right? But hold up, hold up. You're talking about Terrence Mann starting at point guard. Cool, yeah. right? But, John, we always talk about this, right? And I can't wait for this debate Monday, right? Because I have so much facts to bring it up for Derek, uh, um, Russell Westbrook. At the end of the day, Russell Westbrook wins a ring. What do y'all have to say? It doesn't matter if he, he plays He doesn't bad. win a ring, though. He doesn't win a ring this year because his team is not win a ring. But, but, but hold up. But this is the same play. Hold up. But this is the same dude, John, that just said the Lakers are going to be a sixth seed and go and potentially can go far. This is the same dude that said that, right? So you can't say the Clippers ain't going to do this, do that, because in, in, in the, the uh, segment before, right, about the Atlanta Hawks, we was just saying that, right? What, what was you just saying about the Atlanta Hawks? Anything can happen. Anything could what happen, right? Oh. Anything could happen, right? So with the, with this Los Angeles Clippers, if we're looking on the paper, if we're looking at the roster, without Russ, they already been playing really good. They're a top four seat in the Western Conference, correct? Mm -hmm. So you like, I get it. I, I'm not disagreeing with your some points. Like I I, I agree with some points, right? But like I'm saying, the difference was it, it, it's forty seven million dollars, right? That was the huge part, John. Am I wrong or right? That was the huge part of why the Lakers met like struggle because Russ wasn't playing up to the forty seven million dollars. But they couldn't trade for anybody because no one really wanted him, right? Can we so be that's, real? I agree. Can we be real? He wasn't yeah, playing up to he wasn't playing up to seven million dollars. We're being honest with you. Mm -hmm. Also, Westbrook they would have traded him for a bag of chips if someone would have taken him. They were trying to get rid. They literally went on blast social media in the summer saying, "Will anyone take him? Anyone take him?" So I don't think it was forty seven or seven million dollars. Russell Westbrook wasn't good enough to even be moved across the league. Even the bad teams to get bought out anyway. Eventually, it happened mid-season. So, we'll see what happens. Up. So, hold up. So, Russell Westbrook wasn't good enough to be traded, but John Wall was, and John Wall has played worse than Russell Westbrook. So, hold up. Does, does John, any, of, the, does any John, of that make it sense, right? John Wall also missed a lot of games all season, to be fair. And but. John Wall's about to be un... Uh, he's going to have no job, and he played way worse than Russell Westbrook, and they have the same contract, right? But he still got traded, right? So, but now... Who, huh? But no one made John Wall the third the third star in LA. No one made John Wall. But, that. but also, that's right? Russell but Westbrook who, was supposed to be. But yeah, exactly. But whose fault was that? Because y'all literally, you hold up. Y'all said, y'all said before he joined the Lakers, he okay. sucked, right? That's who what y'all say. Who said who, that? Who said that? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know who said that because honestly, hold up, hold up, hold up. You know, John, that's, that's fact. Sucking. You said that. You no. said. No, I said that's he, when he, I before he came to the Lakers, I yes! never said that. You that's said the crazy. Wizards, he no. sucked, and Rockets, he sucked. You literally said that. Oh, but hold, hold on. As a matter of fact, he did suck because do you remember that bubble? Do you so remember how he was So, unguarded? okay, and that's the point, and that's the point I brought up, right? If he sucked, how did he make first all – Um, oh, what's that thing called? All pro? First, first team all-NBA. I don't know if he made first team all-NBA. That, uh, that – No, that Wait, year – What, what that, year? That, um, it was the 2019-2019 year. 
I literally because I'm on notes, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at my notes right now that I had up for um Russell Westbrook. Cause I this this is crazy. He did not make first team all. He made third team all NBA. Ooh, okay. So hold up. You get third, it. Hold up. Hold up. Third, so that's hold up. That's so good. That's so exactly. Good. So what is the criticism? So what is so okay, what is like what, not first though? But that's not first. If you're on the All Pro, you're good no matter what. That was 2020. That's a bubble season. I'm almost paused. That was three years ago. That's so hold up. So hold up. So hold up. So the bubble season. A lot of people said it doesn't matter. Correct. Right. right? That's right. not true. But yeah. But hold some on, people said. Some people say yes. Exactly. Right. Okay. Then. Yeah. Right. So everybody can say that this and that. Right. At the end of the day, Russell Westbrook averaged 28 points, 27 point two eight rebounds, and seven assists that year. So they- and then. Hold up, hold up. Bubble and got smacked. They got they lost. Like I'm pretty sure they got swept in the bubble, actually. In the rock. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't get swept. There's you know what's crazy? <laughs> you should know this because they played the Lakers and we had they to beat y'all. One. They beat y'all the first game. So okay, we, it's good, good job. They won game one and then lost the rest. Okay, it's, but if a, we're gonna, gentleman, if, a gentleman sweep. Hold up, right? if okay. we're gonna throw fa- if we're gonna throw facts out there, make sure you throw it correctly, right? Okay, Just a gentleman sweep. That. All right, yeah, okay, I'm, right? I'm throwing it. A gentleman then, sweep. Then, then, then the year then the year after that, he played for the Washington Wizards, average a triple double, but not only did that, right? We don't care about the triple doubles because everybody claims after Russ did it, no one cares about triple doubles, right? But it is That's what true. it is, right? Hold up. He carried that team to the playoffs. Who the last time the Wizards made the playoffs before Russell Westbrook whoa, got there? Whoa, whoa, What you mean carry? Was Bradley Beal not on long side? Bradley Beal's overrated! He is overrated, bro! I'm sorry, did Bradley Beal not average 30 points a game that season? Am I he did not. Hey, hold up. He hold carried up. him to the 12 seed? Oh, okay. They, no, ooh, they went ooh. to the play he... and lost to the Celtics. What you mean? I remember that season, the year after. You're Russell talking about 20, 2021, 2022, correct? Yeah, that was... No, because... No, no, no. We're not talking about that year because... Oh, you're uh, talking about 2020, 2021, when... We're talking so, about... Um, let's see, 2020, first 2021. The first... He only played He only played for one year with... Uh, so, yeah, the that was, they lost in the play-in to the Celtics that season because the Celtics lost to the Nets uh, yeah. 4-0. I remember that season. Yep. Very yeah. well. Bradley Beal averaged 30 points. No, hold on, hold on. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. No, they were the eighth didn't. seed. They were no. the eighth seed. No, they, they played the 76ers in the first round. What are you talking about? That year they played the 76ers. So they must have okay. So I guess they were the eighth seed. They lost the Celtics in the first play, and then they beat the next team in the next round to play. So they okay. they they were 34 and 38. Now go look at go look at that roster and look at those players that Russell Westbrook carried, right? You can what say Russell Westbrook. Saying? Bro, do you want to look back at that well, roster? Bradley, Bradley Beal is on, on that team? team. Average, bro. I don't care if you think he's overrated. I don't care if they don't come at a good. Effect. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Thirty points is thirty points. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. LeBron and AD, right? LeBron and AD on the same team, right? And they're still yeah. struggling to make the playoffs. And those are the two best players in the league, correct? Yeah, right. But they, but but Anthony hold Davis on, hold on, hold on. missed half the season, and LeBron who's, James is thirty. What is that? That's their fault. Okay, but uh, Russ availability Russ, is the best thing you Beal, always say. Okay, but Beal was out there. Agreed, but Beal was out there. Bro, was you know what's crazy? Thirty points per so, game. So hold up, hold up. They had okay. You want to look? Please, everybody, look up that roster right now. Please look up that Wizards roster. Please. I'm you, they had Bradley Beal scoring thirty-one points per game. There's no you can tell. Bro, you. and two players out of twelve. Brother, name me another team that has – bro, any team that has two players uh, – Hold up, two just look – That can score stop more Stop talking than 30 and points. look up oh, that roster. That's crazy. I'm, there's nothing to look up, Trent. You realize they have Bradley Beal. No, I, you get no respect for carrying a squad when you have a player like Bradley Beal on your team. You're not carrying. Bradley, he wasn't even the best player on that team. There's no – there's nothing. Okay, I'm not so going to look up – This is the team. roster because you don't want to bring up the facts. You don't want to bring up the I'm facts. I'm bringing up the facts. Bradley Beal is on that team. They that's had – yo, they had Davis Bertans. Isaac Bonga, Troy Brown, Chris Chizolzi, freaking Rui at that time, Amy Mahini, Garrison Matthews. You can't name none of these players on the roster right now besides Rui and Bradley Bill and Thomas Bryant. Yeah, Everybody okay. else sucks. They're not, bro. Half Troy, of these Brown Troy Brown Jr. Troy Brown Jr. Sucks. Troy Brown, Jr. Troy Brown sucks. Danny Avita is a really good player, but yeah. I mean, but he wasn't good that year. He, he was, was not good that year. It was, it was a rookie that season. He was not. Yeah, exactly. Years old. So he wasn't. He wasn't good that year because I, I was rooting for him. I wanted him to step up that year, right? So I just named you all the players. Half of these players are not even in the league no more. Mm, that's, that's not all. true. Thomas Bryant's still in the league. Troy, Troy Brown's still in the league. Isaiah Bonga is in the league. Davis Bertan is still in the league. Jordan Bell still in the league. Uh, Jordan Bell's Bradley, not in the league no more. <laughs> Jordan okay. Bell's not in the play, league. Played in the, played in the league for, for more than five I years. I said now. Okay. All right. And Okay. Take one away. That's still five. Isaiah Thomas ain't in the league, bro. And, and if they are. Who? I said, I said Thomas Bryant. Okay. Look, maybe, maybe you're not following. Thomas Bryant, Troy Brown Jr., Isaiah Bonga, Bradley Beal, uh, uh, D- uh, D- Davdi Avdia, dude, Mo, um, M- M- Wagner, one of the Wagner bros, Ish Smith, Raul Netu. 
Robin Lopez. Okay, Alex, and now Alex you... Len. No, 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 hold on. No, Let me finish. Continue, Alex continue, Len, continue. Daniel Gat. Daniel Gafford. Okay. And Rui now, name That's these 12 players. players. That's hold 12 up. players. That John, are John, now let me ask you this question, right? Name right, those players. Take out of here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Name those players. Are they getting valuable minutes currently in the that NBA right bro, now? They, no, Troy, Troy Brown not. Jr. Yeah, Troy Brown Jr. was a starter. Tom, Tom, Thomas Bryant was just a starter. Bradley Beal. He ain't even starter. playing no more in, in Denver. He ain't right. playing no more in Denver. Right, we, 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 my, was Davis Bertans ain't even playing no more, right? He ain't playing no more. Ema Hemi. Um, what's his mm. name? E- Ian Mahimi ain't playing no more. Garrison Matthews, he was playing earlier in Houston. I just listed 12 players that are still in the league, so and that are still playing. And then I asked you another question, and you and, couldn't answer it. And, and, I, and I answered them. Troy Brown Jr., again, was a starter. Tommy you Bryant named one! Coming off the bench. You named oh, one! I just, I just listed three right here. Troy, Troy Brown, Thomas Bryant, Ruchi Hakamura, and I literally and asked you, though, you're not answering the just, question properly. But, I said, you're who's not listening. getting... I, I'm and I just answered. And I answered. I literally I answered. said, Again, man, I answered out of these players right here are getting valuable you see, minutes. You see that, Bobby? That's somebody. That's somebody that lost an argument and don't know what to say because I'm literally listing it to you right here. I'm. I'm literally. Hold listing on. What's valuable minutes in the rotation? Uh, Troy Brown Jr. was just a starter. Thomas Bryant was just a starter. Davis Bertans plays big minutes. Mo Wagner. What? Bro, bro, you know I, I ain't gonna lie. Yo, this is the first argument I actually got in with John, bro. I thought John actually knows basketball, You bro. don't know basketball. But after this argument... Players. I listed you 12 players. Again, I listed you 12 players. And then I... Lit, but that question and, that and, I asked and, you... And I followed up with it. You said... I, I literally listened to you. So, so John, 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 John. Thomas Bryant, Ruchi Hakamura. John, let me, let me ask you one question. Troy, John, Troy Brown Jr. You your said argument Davis, is done. Your hold on. Davis Bertans. You said Davis Bertans gets valuable minutes. You, your argument is done. Can I, want, hold on. I'm asking you a question, right? But I'm following up. I'm following okay, up. right? And Rui, I'm asking you another question. Rui, Rui's a starter in the league. Tom Let Bryant's me, I'm asking you a question Troy right Brown. now. The argument is done, my boy. It's How are you going to give up? Yo, listen. It's not giving up. You're, it John, was a terrible take Bobby, from your Bobby, end. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. He, didn't he just say Davis Bartarns gets plenty of minutes right now, right? He Didn't he just say that, right? Valuable minutes is what the statement was, yeah. Valuable minutes. So, the Nick, bro, I didn't even mean to swear. In 11 games, he played two games. Okay. Eight minutes in six minutes. You know how much minutes he averages? 10.6 minutes. Your word said valuable minutes. All I you was don't know to... basketball anymore. John, hold on, hold on. I listed you 12 players on this team that are still in the league playing big minutes. That's it. 10 minutes oh. is big? 10 Bro. minutes is big? Tell me, it's the league. There's 500 best players in the world. 10, 10 minutes, minutes in the NBA is, is insane. Big? Yes, yes, Trent. And we have we Bobby, have Bobby, can we, we have, yo, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. I, I will say this. Davis Bertans is not the greatest player in the world. However, they did use him a lot last year in the postseason. They did, he did right? Valuable minutes then. 14 minutes. He only put 14 minutes up. That's wow. That's so many minutes to play in the playoffs, bro. Like you really don't know about I'm gonna you be honest with a you. Lot of minutes in the valuable minutes is when he was back in Wizards where he got 29, 25. No, that's bro. valuable minutes. No, bro. No, that's starter minutes. <laughs> that's that's that's, that's hold on, hold on. damn near starter minutes. Look, we're not gonna we're not gonna get into this again. I listed you twelve players on this. And team. my question, bro, you know what's and, crazy? And I followed up. And literally, I followed up, no, no, you didn't follow, follow up with, at all I did. because Rui's I'm bringing up points and you're, not, and you're trying Rui, to end the argument. Rui's, I'm, I'm, and I'm because your argument is done, bro. Rui's a starter. Thomas Bryan's a starter. J- Troy Brown Jr. is a starter. Davide Avida plays. The Wagner brothers plays. Ish Smith is a notoriously known great player off the bench in this league, bro. And if you don't know that, you're not watching the league. That's no, it. Hold up, t- hold All up. I'm saying is that hold take up, that up. you had Tom- of Russell Westbrook carrying them is a whack take. That's not a real take. It's not a whack take at all. Thomas Bryant. Hold up, hold up. But did it? Wasn't Thomas Bryant leaving the Lakers because he wasn't getting enough minutes, and then went to Denver to get less minutes? Oh, what are you, what are you trying to tell me? Oh, oh, oh. We're ta- we're talking about you. You yourself are talking about the 2020. 2020 2021 season yes he was and, on and, that team and i'm and you're asking me what players are playing big minutes bro now, he's playing a now, big minute bro now. stop acting dumb bro he was just playing Hold a big up, minute ish like smith even again ish smith gets 10 minutes a game that's big minutes oh, to you that's crazy. yo yo bobby you don't I'm know just basketball curious. all right bobby, let's, i'm let's just curious this. is 10 minutes a lot that's all i'm asking is 10 minutes a lot yes when there's players in the league that get two yes oh my so but my point yo you know what's crazy if you get 20 plus minutes a game Cool, right? That that's a valuable role player right there. But when you start touching ten minutes a game, this is this this is where it comes down to freaking um. What's that thing? Um, when you when you're getting blown out, that's that's garbage that's time. What, yeah, garbage time. That's 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 what it's gonna average up to around, right? 
Please, please that, show it, me, please show me one game in the NBA that you've seen 10 minutes of garbage time. So the, the when last, teams get blown out in the third quarter, when, okay. te- and, and, when teams okay, get so start, please, start please show me, quarter. please show me one game where there's 10 minutes of, of you garbage. know what's crazy? Yesterday, I actually watched a game yesterday with Golden State versus um oh Lakers. Lakers. Golden, yeah, they, they, they lost they took to the Lakers. Off, yep. Yeah, they they took off their starters the beginning of the fourth quarter. You know how much left in that first quarter? I mean, in that fourth quarter, there's 12 minutes a game. That's literally 12 minutes right there. That I, not- li- I, I watched that game because I, I literally seen it yesterday. They took Jordan Poole, Draymond Green right off, right? As soon as they went to a 20-point lead, took them out. But all I'm trying to get at, though, right? And, and we can all – and I just, wanna, I just want everybody to agree. The players that I listed, we all know they're not really good basketball players. We can no, all agree to that. That's not true. No, we cannot agree at all. We Gone cannot agree far. at all. That's too that, far. That. Yeah, you're going, I'm telling you, Trent, you're going too far. Bradley Beal is a good player. I'm not, Troy bro. Brown we're not Jr. talking about Bradley Beal no oh more. Oh my though. god, we're he's talking on about the, that team, bro. The two, obviously, on a team you have two stars, correct? They so have, yeah, about, they had two stars. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about the role players around them, and, I'm, and I've listed them. That's and then, all and then my question was right: the players around them were not that good. Daniel Gafford, still, still a starter in this league, actually. Thomas Bryant, Ruchi Hakamura, um, again, Ish, uh, again, Wagner. I mean. I mean, okay. Like again, again, these are all players who are getting playing time right now. Name, I'm not saying hold up, starters. I ain't gonna lie. Out of four, you name four players that 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 I you know me, that are. You want to name the rest? Good. You want me name the rest too? As soon as you throw Is Smith in the on the conversation, Is Smith Is Smith is very good. We get that, right? But so he's, then, he doesn't play much. He doesn't play much no more. He's a third string. Um, what's his name? Third string point guard. Guess what? This, but well, we not talk, we talking about three years ago when he was getting bigger. That's bigger not what I'm talking, bro. I think. Hold up. I think this is the argument that you're getting confused with because I'm talking about now. That's all I'm talking about. I'm talking about the players now. Yeah, you said what players from that team are playing now? Yes. And, why, and then, but, and then, but, but, but why are we talking? Because your your original statement. And this is how we're going to end it because we're talking way too much about a week old buyout player in Russell West. This is this look, is literally a, this is it's a sport, so you debate. Look, you can't you can't debate. Yeah, look, look, your st- your take was Russell Westbrook carried this team. Russell Westbrook carried this team. Me and Bobby shot that down by saying, how can you carry a team when you have another player on your team that is averaging thirty points per game? And then another take that you had was the players on this team they're not in the league anymore. And I listed you 12 players in this that are on this team that are still in the league. That's the argument. And that's me and Bobby's answer to you. And you just need to come to terms that Russell. You know Westbrook what's crazy? You know what's done. crazy? You, you're throwing Bobby in it. But Bobby, you know, he's staying signed over there. Some takes he has agreed with you, but there's some takes I know he disagrees with you. So let's not throw Bobby in it like it's facts. Bro, you see how he still hasn't answered that question when I said it's 10 minutes a lot. He stayed quiet on that. You noticed that, right? 10 minutes is not a lot in the NBA. I'd say Thank 15 you. minutes is a good Thank spot. Thank you. Exactly. Really and, 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 then the, and then the players that he was naming were all getting 10 minutes. Is that Smith is, is not getting true. 10 minutes. That's is crazy. Smith, is Smith. Is Smith is getting 10 minutes. Bertans is getting 10 minutes. Troy um, Brown Jr. is getting more than 10 minutes. Daniel Gafford Troy is getting Brown's more than 10 minutes. Troy Brown's not a starter no more. Richie Hakamura is getting more than 10 minutes. I said um, I gave you those four players, though. I gave you those Bradley four players. Be- Bradley Beal is definitely getting more than 10 minutes. Uh, again, that's uh, – oh, right there. Isaiah Bonga, so, Troy hold, Brown, uh, Daniel Gafford, Thomas Bryant, and Bradley Beal. That's five. You know what's crazy? We're talking about role players. Why do you keep bringing up Bradley Beal? Because I, you cannot get away with that take. I'm not letting you run away with that take. Of you know what's crazy? Russell Westbrook carried yo, that team. Yo, yo, you know what's crazy? You, you know basketball, right? You think I don't know basketball, right? The last time Isaac Bonga been in the league was 2021, buddy. He's not even in NBA no more. Okay. Just saying. Again, just saying. Just saying. Again, We're, okay, okay. Okay. Cool. Take away one player. That's four players I listened to. And then, right, cool. and then hold up, and then, and then hold up. Your take was ten minutes is a lot, and what did Bobby say? Ten minutes is not a lot. So now we're now we're taking out more players, correct? We're taking Bertans out. We're taking Ish Smith out. We're taking Ehi, um, what's his name, Ehi Mahimi out, right? I'm 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 staring I'm staring at that roster, and I haven't brought up Ehi Mahimi one time. Ehi, but 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 he was a part of the roster though. Is is again the players to combat your take? Uh, that this team was not a bum team. It had a thirty point game. At 30 uh, points per, per game score, it had Troy Brown Jr., it had Thomas Bryant, it had Daniel Gafford, it had Ruji Hakamore. Yeah, you know what's crazy? As soon as you start bringing up Troy Brown Jr., you know you lost the take when you That's bring up this bump. You know you lost the take when you... But, like, bro, we all know Troy <laughs> Brown's not good, bro. Like, we, we all know all he's know, not good. We all know you lost the take when you say Russell Westbrook carried that take. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Take. You know you lost another play when um only... Te- uh, what's his name? Thomas Bryant's only getting 10 minutes a game once again. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. That's another player you could take out, right? But by by our guest Bobby, because he said ten minutes is not a lot. So if we're gonna go by off that, right? That I just named four players and two players that are not in the league on that roster. 
Okay. But okay, well, let's go. We get pushing. we we continue. Let's go ahead and keep pushing to the the segment that we all here for, man. Is um Bobby? What I got right here is I got a set of uh I got two sets of players. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and list off the stats for you, uh, and without saying their names, and you go ahead and let me know which player you'd rather take. Uh, and I'll go ahead and you know for the people on YouTube that will be on screen right there for you. Uh, Bro, does that make sense it. with you, Bobby? What's up, T? Yeah, we got a skip over here, dog. You remind me of Skip, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Man, oh. you you remind me of somebody that don't yeah, watch you. Yeah, you remind me of Skip. This is, <laughs> this, is, this, is this, this is the same player that said 10 minutes is a lot in the NBA. Okay. This is the same, this is the same dude that still believes in Russell Westbrook. All right, let's keep it pushing. <laughs> Who gives up on let's their player? Who gives let's up on their player? Pushing. You give let's up keep on your pushing. player? Let's keep okay, it pushing. Who gives yeah, up I'm on just realistic. I'm realistic about it. You're realistic, but you said the Lakers gonna be a top six. I'm realistic You're realistic though. You said Lakers gonna be a top six seed. I'm realistic, yeah. I'm really even listening. Bobby knows Lakers ain't being top six because we talked about this on TikTok Live. <laughs> Come we on, we all know, hey, we, hey, you're. Come on, your I'm boys, just saying, hey, I'm just hey, saying, and I'm just fine. I'm just saying, your man's got bought out. Your man's fucking. That's stuck. fine, and he's still, he's still a Hall of Fame point guard, baby. He's still going Hall of Fame. He's still going. Everybody makes the Hall of Fame with being honest. Hey, man, like, for real, that's what first I'm trying to ballot, say. First ballot Hall of Fame, baby. Hey, everybody first makes ballot. Hall of Fame. Congratulations. First right, ballot Hall of Fame. All right, let's keep pushing. Anyway, so my boy Bobby. um that's what we got. We got this uh, guest. The uh, we're not guests. Just pick whichever player you think is best with stats. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, here we go, Bobby. So, player A, he's averaging twenty-seven points per game, mm-hmm. five assists, four rebounds, forty-eight percent from the field, thirty-eight percent from three, eighty-seven percent from the free throw line. All right. Player B is averaging twenty-six points per game, five assists. Four rebounds, 47% from the field, 35% from three, and 84% from the free throw line. Now, obviously, I know I'm going to get trolled here. There's going to be a, a little slip up. I know, obviously, there's no defense on this side. Steals or blocks are not here. I honestly would take the, the first guy. Obviously, score more points, about the same assists, same rebounds, a little more efficient on the three ball. Give me a player right here. Okay. T, T, how you, how you, how you feeling? Repeat that again. Yeah, here we go. Player A is yep. 27 points per game. Yep. Five rebounds. Sorry, five assists per game. Four rebounds per game. 48% from the, from the field. 38% from the three-point line. And 87% from the free throw line. A player B is 26 points per game. Five assists. Four rebounds. 47% from the field and 35% from the three-point line, and 84% from the free throw line. I'm taking second one. Ooh, okay. All right. <laughs> I like that. Here's and, the re- Okay, my me. fault. You good, you good, you good, you good. Talk, you good, you good. Talk to me. All right, so, no, so you could reveal it, and then I'll talk. All right. Okay, all right, so here's, here, here's a reveal. Player A, <laughs> Donovan Mitchell, definitely a great, great player, Mr. 71 himself. Player B, Devin mm-hmm. Booker. Mm. Any, any, does that change anything? Does that make you feel any type of way? Well, I always been saying Donovan Mitchell is better player than um than Devin Booker. Whoa. But I always said that. But yes. but but I do want to say this, right? Devin Booker led his team to the finals, right? So we can't discredit that at all, right? He was the main reason why there was no KD over there. It was Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and he. So we can never discredit that. To be fair. Devin Mitchell was on a Utah Jazz team, but I, I don't want to hear about to be fair excuses this and that, right? If Devin Booker's putting up these if these numbers, correct, they're all similar pretty much, 84, 87, 35, 38, right? And Devin Booker missed more time this year, right? He missed more time with that injury. Um, so he um, even when he did play games, um, there was still like – they're still going to put in – add to his stats, right? So if he plays and he gets injured, it's still going to add to his stats or he's playing through injury and stuff like that, whatever the case may be, bro. So if these stats are going that that similar, and Donovan Mitchell is having a great year for uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, right? It's it's tough to say, John, but I might have to switch my answers, bro, because I, I I think, book, bro, you gotta go with book, bro. Wow, I'm not gonna lie, that is that that that's a big one, especially coming from UT, because I know how much you now don't don't only really be feeling book, but um, but Bobby, real quick, let me ask you, Bobby, I, I heard a, a quick whoa right when uh, my boy T said that. He has Donovan Mitchell over Devin Booker. You, you don't agree with that take? Because I'm, I'm on T side for this one. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't know what Donovan Mitchell has done to prove that he's better than Devin Booker at anything in life. I ain't going to hold you. He, Devin Booker was better in college. Devin Booker has been better ever since he's been with the Suns. 
Mitchell was on a team in the Utah Jazz with an overperforming regular season team that was going to get spanked in the regular se- or postseason. Didn't matter who they were playing against every single time. Devin Booker was on a team that had nothing else. You want to talk about the Washington Wizards had no one else to play with. Devin Booker's playing with Goran Dragic and, and uh, him were so small as Tyler Eulis. That's the players he was playing with as his guards and his big man situation, Eric Bledsoe, an awful team. He finally gets Chris Paul. They go to the NBA Finals. He finally gets good players with D.A. getting drafted. They get to the second round and get upset by the Mavericks. Even this season, now they get Kevin Durant added to the squad. Devin Booker's always been better than him, clearly as a player and definitely as a performer and a winner in, in the NBA easily. Man, that's, that's, I like it. I like it. That's a, that's a hot take, but I like it. But all right, here we go. Here's my next set of players. So player A, this, this one's right here for you, Bobby. Player Wait, can a. we go back to the thing real yeah. quick? Talk to me. To be fair, because I like to go <laughs> resume. I don't, I don't, I don't, I know a lot of people don't like resume. They think it's corny. They just think of recently biased. It is what it is, right? This is what they did for their whole career, correct? This is this is everything they have done, right? Devin Booker made it to the finals once, lost. He got he got beat up by Luka Doncic, got literally killed on TV. I don't mean to say killed. He got dominated on TV by the Dallas Mavericks, right? Went to game seven, right? Am I mistaken? Did they get swept or went to game seven? I'm lost. They, they went to game seven, and then okay. you expect this team to – so what? You're going to credit them because they went to seven with the Dallas Mavericks? I wouldn't say killed if they got – to a game seven, I, I think it's a little harsh there. So they game got, seven, they so game seven, um, Bobby, they didn't get dominated. They oh, in that a, one game, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm talking about. Series, I no, 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 no. I'm talking about game seven, the game that you needed the most. Yeah, they Devin well. Booker and Chris Paul didn't play well. No, they no, no, no. We're not going <laughs> to use that word. They, no, no, no. Not, we're Devin not Booker use was. That. You think Devin no. Booker's going to shoot five or twenty? Devin Booker's better. No, no. Than we're that. not going to use that word. They played ass, right? That they. Bro, they play trash, right? Bad start. Bad start. I think they were, it was, they were like 30 to eight in the first quarter. What are they going to do? Bad start. They couldn't That's hit threes. A, Jay so Crowder's wide open. Devin Booker is amazing scoring. He couldn't score. I mean, come on. You got to throw it away. So, so if you can't score in the big moments that we all need you to, we all need you to step up, whoa, John, right? Oh, that's unfair. That's unfair. As if Devin Booker didn't just lead them big moments the year before in the playoffs. I think it was one bad game. Had, that's all had, it was. They had... That and that was the see. That's the thing, though. You can't put see. Look at I, I. I like how like and I, I'm trying to bring it. I'm not gonna bring it up no more. But listen, what I'm trying to get at, right? We we criticize Jason Tatum because what he did in the NBA Finals, right? He he did, he played awful. No, no, he got criticized. We he played <laughs> awful, right? But those were the biggest moments where like if you're called, so called a superstar, you got to step up in those moments, right? LeBron mm-hmm. he steps up. What did he do? He came from three one, right? And I don't like comparing no one to LeBron, right? But he's a superstar player. You got, you know, Jordan, right? These are these two players that stepped up to be that superstar player, right? So if yeah. we're going to call these two players, what do, you, what do you call Devin Booker and Mitchell? Superstar players or like star players? What I, I would go stars. I think superstar is a little tough, but I go stars. Okay. okay, right. So these are star players in the league, but we but the, their two teams rely on them. They rely on them to win the game for them. They rely on them every single year, right? We can yeah. both say they, they had their fierce uh, stretch of them choking. Devin Mitchell choked against the Houston Rockets. He played awful. He couldn't hit a shot, but even Devin Booker, right? But in the big moments, I think Devin Booker gets a little bit more criticized because one game seven is more televised. Well, it's obviously televised, correct? But besides like a first round series, right? People don't really pay attention to that. Bat- real basketball players watch the first round. But when it's a game seven, eyes are everywhere. No matter what, eyes are everywhere. So he's going to get criticized for that. And that's where he choked the most. And during that championship run against the Milwaukee Bucks, right? They lost 4-2, I believe, during that series. Devin Booker had up and down up and down games during that series, right? So the Bucks were a better team overall. But if you're going to be labeled as that guy and you're going to be labeled as, you know, these two players, I, I to be honest, Sean, you might not be able to say who's better. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you because they have kind of they have similar stats. They 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 um what's it called? They choked in the biggest moments, right? They choked in the biggest moments. You could say book they did, they did biggest uh, moment. Huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Say what you gotta did, say. Say what you gotta say. Did Booker not play in the finals? What? No, did, and I was gonna. Did you ever get to the? Conference no, I was gonna bring that up. I was gonna bring okay, that I was up. About to say, I was yeah, about, no, no, I was that was my next thing. That was my next thing. Okay. I, I promise. I was gonna bring that. <laughs> Devin, Devin Booker went to the finals, so that's why you you may give him the edge. But if we're gonna talk about player to player, like that's kind of talking team to team, right? Because Phoenix Suns roster was just way better than the Utah Jazz, right? You done I, it. They, they were a sixty win team, so I wouldn't say all that, but right. But also, right? 
regular season to these basketball players, right? Let's be honest with you. Regular season, these games, people don't take as serious. Regular season, they're just regular season games. If right? you win 60 wins, they both both teams won 60 wins. I think they were both taking regular season very But that, yo, these two bro, that Utah Jazz team, bro, we all know was overrated. We, we all They know. were. They're a terrible to, team. The, the, terrible team, bro. But, but also, right, I know you, you and John agree to the fact that, like, coaching doesn't matter. But I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Ever since Monty came over there, the whole culture changed. They, 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 James Jones improved that whole roster. They added a lot of new additions, just traded for Kevin Durant. Monty Williams has changed. Monty Williams and James Jones have changed that whole culture, correct? Yeah. You know, let's, we're kind of – Let's give credit to Chris Paul, too. I know Chris – I know yeah, that's not 100%. the prisoners of the moment. Like, I know Chris Paul's not having great of a season. When he first came to the Suns, he was boy, he, he flipped that whole thing around for them. So 100%. that was a big part, too. I'm not going to lie. So I think these players are more compared. I think these players, you could say, you could go with your favorite player. You could choose Devin Mitchell, Devin Booker. But I think it's more 50-50 if you want to go with it. Or you can go 49-50. But I, I think it's very, very close. I don't think you could be like, I'm taking Devin Booker by this far or I'm taking D. Mitch this far, right? The only thing Devin Booker has is that finals appearance. And that's, and that's a big thing because it's hard to make it to the finals, right? Huge, huge thing, correct? So the stats this year have been very similar, correct? Um, and so I, I, this one's very hard. I, I, I can't. I'm not. I changed my answer. I'm not choosing. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, I can't choose because it's it's very similar, right? I think it's too too. Like it's it's tough. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 definitely right there, which and that's exactly why I chose these two. Yeah. Uh, stats are very similar. Um, and yeah, I, I I honestly go back and forth, man. Like there's some days where I'm like, well, Devin Booker's more of a winner, but then I'm like, man, I haven't seen Devin Booker do what Donovan Mitchell did to all those, to, to some of those teams in the playoffs, right? When he's putting away Russ and single-handedly, I mean, like, look, 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 that, like, I'm the, and then not to bring nothing up with Russ and OKC, but like that, that Russ team with Russ and PG and, and I believe Victor Oladipo, they should have beat that Utah Jazz. Mitchell, like Mitchell, I'll played every single player in that series. Yeah, which is yeah. wild, man. But. See, they, see, one thing about me, a lot of people try to say I'm biased, but John, we we do a lot of shows together, bro. Do I always I always call Russ's bluff out, no matter what, bro? Like I would defend him to the end, but I would <laughs> always call his bluff out, no matter what, bro. Right? Russ yeah. played like you know what I'm saying. So Mitchell, Mitchell, Mitchell didn't destroy us once. He destroyed us a few times because it was always OKC versus Utah in that first round matchup. But give yeah. give a shout out to Ricky Rubio. That's because he he was balling out in that series too. But shout out Ricky Rubio, man, but. All right, so let, let me get to my next set of players here. Um, and this one right here is this is coming your way, Bobby. Um, player A is 19 points per game, two assists per game, five rebounds, 42% from the field, 32% from the three-point line, 74% from the free throw line. Now, player B is 17 points per game, 0 0.9 assists per game, seven rebounds per game, 50% from the field, 35% from three, and 77% from the free throw line. They both sound like role players, to be honest here. I'll take player B. Player B. Oh, okay. T, you ready? John, you know you have to repeat that. Yeah, I, I got you. <laughs> player A, 19 points per game. Yep. Two assists, five rebounds, 42% from the field, 32% from the three-point line. Okay. Free throw line for that player A is 74%. Player B is 17 points per game, 0 0.9 assists, seven rebounds, 50% from the field, 35% from the three-point line, 77% from the free throw line. These are bigs because ain't no guard or forward is averaging 0 0.9 assists in the game. So I'll tell you that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Porter Jr. Yeah. Oh. That dude don't pass. He just, he just, he, he gets the ball, he's shooting. Right? So, so you got T. Player A or player B? I'm going to go with – ooh. I'm going to go – I'm going to go with player B because he's shooting more efficient. Ooh. Okay. I like that. I like that. All right. So, for the reveal, player A is R.J. Baird. Player B is an all-star in Jaron Jackson Jr. Yep. I'm already for it. Mm. R.J. Barrett's overrated. And he ain't take no leap. He ain't take a leap at all. I'm for it. I'll take it any day. <laughs> <laughs> how, you how, you about about, that, how you feel about that Bobby uh obviously Jaron Jackson is obviously a better player than RJ Barrett I think Barrett just goes to the inefficiency the way his play style is he'll gladly go three or 15 shooting but again he'll make that one shot like against Soldiers when you're banking the three to win the game he'll take some tough shots and make them but yeah he's inefficient he's a good scorer I give him that that's pretty much all he can do yeah RJ Barrett is like one of those players who just knows how to put the ball in the basket 
That all right, so Bobby, I got I got I got two for you. All right, get ready yep. for this one. Okay, now this one's gonna get interesting. Okay, listen, twenty five points a game, forty six point four percent, forty six point four percent from the field, thirty six point four percent from the three point line, six rebounds, four point five assists, and one point six steals. You got that in your head? Okay. All right, my player B, twenty seven points. 46% from the field, 32% from the three-point line, six rebounds, 8.2 assists, and 1.1 steal. I like player B. Okay. So, John, you ready? Yeah. I'm going to need you to listen again, though. I'm not going to lie. Got you. Got you. Okay. Player A, 25 points a game, 46% from the field, 36% from the three-point line, six rebounds, 4.5 assists, and 1.6 steals. Player B will be 27 points a game. 46% from the field, 32% from the three-point line, six rebounds, 8.2 assists, and 1.1 steal. I'm going to have to go play player B with this one. So player A was Anthony Edwards. Ooh. Player B was John ja Moran. Mm, okay, I'm happy, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my take. I'm so my take. I'm going to be honest with you. Maybe this is a hot take. Maybe this is a hot take. And, and maybe this is recently biased because I just watched Jaw play last time. He played awful, right? So maybe this is going to be recent. And, and I like Jaw. I got a Jaw Morant jersey. I think Jaw Morant, tad bit, tad bit overrated. Just a tad. A little bit overrated. Anthony Edwards this season, that boy a hooper. That boy a hooper this year. He's the only yeah. reason why the Minnesota Timbers are relevant this year. Only reason why. The only reason they would have been relevant is for the dumbest trade in NBA history, trading for Rudy Gobert. That's the only reason they would have been relevant if Ant Edwards wasn't there, right? So I personally, for this season, I'm going to go with Ant. But I love me some Ja, because Ja reminds me of Russ in his prime. Okay. Okay? Okay. I hey, John, like I, John, I see what you said, but I'm going to do it real quick. Just real, real, real quick, okay? This Because this one is the one I wanted to get, get to, okay? This player A has 20 points a game, 42% from the field, 30% from the three-point line, 5.1 rebounds, 1.2 assists, 1.6 steals. Okay? Player B. Y'all ready? Yes. Let's get it. 16 points, 30% from the three-point line, 6.2 rebounds, 7.5 assists, and one steal a game. Which player are you taking, Bobby? My honestly, they both sound like, again, role players here. Uh, I'm going to assume these guys are both good defenders. Let, let me go with player A. Okay, okay. John, you ready? Yeah, re re read them both off to me, please. Okay, 20, 20 points a game, 42% from the field, 30% from the three-point line, 5.1 rebounds, 1.2 assists, and 1.6 steals. That's player A. Player B is 16 points a game, 30% from the three-point line, 6.2 rebounds, 7.5 assists, and one steal a game. I'm going to go with player A on this one. Okay, so when I tell y'all this, and, and, and listen, y'all don't like him. Y'all think he's trash. But let's, 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 let's be smart now, okay? The first player was Kelly Oubre. The wow. second player was Russell Westbrook. Now, let's just be smart now. Wow. Let's but just like, be – okay. But, but we'll go. The only thing I would say, I'm, no. I would take Russell Westbrook over Kelly Oubre. But Definitely. the only thing I would say is look at the team Kelly Oubre is in and the opportunity he has. He's like, uh, earlier Bobby was talking about a bad team in the Suns. And remember when Devin Booker scored 70? And it was like, well, who else is going to shoot on, on that team? Like, you, you better score every single time. So that's yeah. kind of how I feel about Kelly Oubre in this situation. So that's why I would take him. But if you would have asked me, Kelly Oubre, Russell Westbrook, I'm taking Russell Westbrook. So, Bobby, I'm going to let you talk. Kelly Oubre is ineff inefficient, though. Okay. He is. I think it's also a little misleading. No stats are obviously from this year. Yeah. Those are early because he's been hurt for the last like two months. Early part of the season, no LaMelo Ball and Terrell Gio was then out the lineup. So that's when he was little and Gordon Hay was also hurt. He was literally the number one option for like a month and a half. So stats are a little misleading. But yeah, Uber was on fire to start the season. Also shows that Russ, maybe his numbers are maybe a little deeper. Maybe he does some things that people don't see in the numbers. But I think that turnover line also would have been pretty important as well to see. You want me to put it in? <laughs> no, no, we good, we good, because we know the turnover number high. That's all we do. We know okay, so I just want to ask you this question, right? It's three. Okay, so three and a half turnovers a lot. I'm just, I'm, not, I'm not being a smart ass. I'm just asking. Yeah. Kind of. Okay. Three okay. and a half turnovers is a lot, especially for the assists. That's a lot. 
Okay, so James Harden does the same thing, but but we're not going to go to that. Anyways, yeah, I think he leads the league in assists, though. Doesn't he average like 10 and a half? Yeah, that's and a lot he, more than seven. He's also a starter. Yeah. He's also a starter. But anyways, he's also a starter, correct? So he gets more minutes than Russ. If Russ if Russ was a starter, he'd get 10 assists a game. If Russ was also better, he'd start too. I mean, uh, <laughs> he's starting this game, though. He's starting tonight. He's yo, I can't wait to play. Yo, I can't wait till he plays in three hours, baby. <laughs> Oh, oh man, he's juice, man. He's he juice. played a night in the starting lineup. I've never wa- I think I've watched one Clipper game all season. I cannot wait to turn this game on. Me on too. And, and I'm gonna tag you on. in every moment. And I'm gonna tag you in every <laughs> moment on TikTok. And when I see Russ plays 15 minutes and doesn't play the fourth quarter, I cannot wait to see that TikTok as well. Cannot 100%. Hey, yo, either way, it's gonna get views. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I love it. I love the energy we got in the building today, man. But all right, y'all. So I feel like we've had a great episode so far. So I just want to kind of close this up. Uh, Bobby, just getting your 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 final you know, final thoughts on um, on the All Star Weekend. Uh, you can kind of tell me about uh, you know favorite moment and you know kind of um, anything you got from it, and then we go ahead and end it off. I think a lot of people, and I've, I've heard a lot of different takes, and I, I wanted to make a video, but I just forgot about doing it. And I think a lot of people hate on All Star Weekend because it's not what they remember when they were younger or when they were when the, in the olden years. I feel like a lot of things in life is just nostalgia. That's all it really is. They're trying to put on a show to entertain people. People are complaining about it's not real basketball. It's meant for entertainment. They're literally playing with money for charities. The big sister, big sister, big, or excuse me, big brother, big sister in the charity. And then they have Boys Club of America. They have all this stuff trying to raise money for these charities. People are like, I wish they weren't trying harder. I wish they were diving on the ground for loose balls as if this game means anything except charity money. That's all it is. For the dunk contest, three-point contest, skills competition, the skill changes were a little weird. I think they're a little clumsy. I feel like they could do a better job explaining the rules and also getting better. I know the Utah Jazz was the reason why they were there because it was in their city. Get better teams. If you want to go the brother route, get all the ball boys. Hopefully they all can be healthy at one time. Hopefully Giannis can be healthy next year and they go and get the Holiday Brothers or you get the Plumley Boys. If you can just get some brothers mixed in some legends, you can have a better game. Three-point contest, I think, should go last. I feel like it's a better game. This year, it was rough because the better shooters just didn't shoot well. In the dunk contest, it is what it is. I feel like, again, you've seen most dunks that can be done. What else can you do if big stars won't do it? My perfect thing is this. If take Jericho Sims out and put in Zion, if Zion did the exact same dunks Jericho Sims did, the exact same way, I promise you sports is going crazy. I promise you all these sites like Bleach Report and House of Highlights or, or drooling at the mouth if Zion did the exact same dunks. If you replace Trey Murphy with damn Andrew Wiggins, and you replace, I can't remember the other kid's name, but if you take, replace all those kids with actual stars and superstars, people love it more. It's just because we don't know who those guys are. There's no connection. So if you can get some rookies to do it, Kate Cunningham's and the Jade Nivies and the Paolo Bancaro's, get those guys to do it, it's way better. Man. Yeah, I'm just going to say one thing, right? Stop bringing the Giannis brothers because they don't deserve it. They suck, right? Um, great example. I, I, honestly, if we're going to go for views, you bring in LeVar Ball, right? Because it's for entertainment. Imagine having LeVar, LeVar Ball <laughs> out there with LaMelo and LeAngelo. I think That'd that would be, be hilarious. hilarious. Father would and hilarious. son would be a pretty dope concept. You see what I'm saying? But then they have Donis and Alex. We don't care for them, right? And then you brought up a great point with the dunk contest, correct? Like, we all seen these dunks. And I, and I asked a friend, I said, is it because we're getting older? And I'm just like... I don't think it's – it could play that, but I don't think it's sad. It's because superstars are not playing, and they're no names. And so when you're a, no na- when you're a, a big name, you do a regular – you just do a regular dunk. Ow! But if it's Jericho Sims, yo, turn that thing off because it's the name, you know? That's all so. it is. Can I say one last thing? I watched a video this morning. Uh, I think it was like some of the best 50-point dunks in dunk constant history. The first half of that video from the 1980s to, I'd say, the mid-2000s, I was looking like – these dunks would get 40s nowadays. I ain't gonna hold you. The, yeah. the vintage Vince Carter dunk, those dunks are being done every night, and those guys are just going mid and they're getting 38s and low 40 numbers. The dunks that Tracy McGrady was doing, bouncing to himself and against Spud Webb shorts that matters. Nate Robinson, Spud Webb, those guys are dunking and getting 50s. Those dunks would get laughed at and booed if they did them today. It's all about when and they done them. And again, we've all seen the dunks being done. There's nothing you can do. Man. Man, I agree, man. That means that they need to make some adjustments to this all-star weekend, man. You know, maybe add some new games. I do really like that father-son thing. That'd be like really cool to see, man. But but all right, man. Well, um, for the family out there, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, man. This was a a great, great episode, man. We had 
a lot of uh, great debates that we got into. We had fun segments. Um, but more than anything, you know, we had our guy be smooth on here, man. So uh, my my boy, man, not only do we, we appreciate you coming on, but I want to know, leave the floor up to you. You got any last words to say uh, before we get up out of here? And I always love making content, especially with other content creators, whether it's basketball, football, anything in between, WWE. I love making content, man. So anytime I can do it and we can hop on a show and, and make some content, I'm always down to do it. Yes, sir, man. T. Riz, you got any last words to say before we get out of here? Hey, be smooth, bro. Listen. T- we good, bro. We good. I, I love y'all, man. I love y'all. I love you. <laughs> yes, sir, man. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it here first, family. Uh, make sure you go check out all of B. Smooth's content. Um, TikTok, YouTube, all that will be in the description down below. Uh, get at us. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And we out of here, y'all. Let's Appreciate talk out. You.